Now here's a problem I've got. Now when I'm at my Land Rover and I want to cook something, I do it here. Right in the back. But it's not convenient. I have to reach over it to get anything out of the back. And when I'm not cooking there, I can't cook on the wing because it's too high up. I don't like cooking sitting in the grass. And as for lying down, who cooks lying down? I need something that folds up and I can clip it on the ladder quickly. Secure it on tightly. It has shelves that fold down. Holds the tranger in place securely. So I can stand up and cook at the right height. And I'll show you how I built it. So let's get in the workshop. I started the process of planning and designing for this project by researching exactly which stove I wanted to use and how I wanted to use it in the Land Rover Defender. I made a YouTube of it and I've put a link in the descriptions below. I gathered lots of critical dimensional information, taking my time to make sure I had all the information I needed to start the design process. Then I started sketching out some ideas and eventually drawing a full size plan on a piece of card. From this drawing I've been able to do cutting lists and further detailed drawings of specific parts of the frame. I'm a huge fan of computer aided design or CAD as it's known in industry but there's another type of CAD that I really enjoy using. Cardboard aided design. This is where I've cut out critical parts of the project full scale in in this case thin plywood and I'm able to offer this up to the various parts of the project as I'm building it to check everything is dimensionally accurate. Now because I've produced a very accurate drawing on a piece of card I can transfer information from the drawing directly onto the metal. And producing careful drawings means that I don't have to make any assumptions as I move through the project and as we all know an assumption makes an ass of an umption. Now I cut my aluminium on a chop saw and a band saw for precision and accuracy but you can cut very successfully using hand tools. I marked each of the four sides using a combination square. I've carefully cut on the waste side of the line, taking each side in turn. I've then filed back to the line that I marked. I'm marking the thin aluminium pieces that will brace the corners. Instead of a ruler, I'm using the aluminium box section to mark the metal. Using metal shears to cut along the line. Here's the drilling jig that I've made. It's got a hole in the centre and an accurately drawn set of crosshairs that are at 90 degrees to each other. I can then use that to set the backstop and the fence to exactly the position I want. In this case, 12.5 millimetres, which is exactly half the distance from one side of the box section to the other. And you'll see it in action now. If it's worked, the jig will be accurate in both directions. If you've got a lot of holes to drill in the same place, it's worth the time it takes to make a jig. So that's it. All the metal's cut, all the holes are drilled. I've cleaned it all up using the countersink, the deburring tool and a file. I also give the metal a quick rub down and a tidy up with a scotch bright pad. The pop rivet is a very simple way of joining two pieces of metal together. It's an aluminium sleeve with a steel pin down the centre. I'm going to put these two washers on here, fit it in the pop rivet gun, and then as I squeeze the lever together, you'll see the aluminium sleeve compress until eventually, and there's the two parts joined securely. I've built myself a fixture here to hold everything in position so that I can pop rivet it quickly. I can then position the tubing on top of the very edge of the board and hold it in place using these simple bridge clamps. I'll then be able to take these little sections and pop rivet them on. Rivets have held some amazing structures together. The Golden Gate Bridge, the Eiffel Tower and the Titanic. So that's it. Phase one finished. I'm really pleased with the progress. The jig did a perfect job of holding everything where it needed to be. I've added a few extra little bits. There's little stop pieces you can see there and the rounded corner on the bottom there and you'll see why in the next phase. 
So I've temporarily fitted the frame to the back of the truck just to check everything's looking right, and it is. I've also refined this template profile so that it fits exactly the way I want it, and I'll use this to help me cut the aluminium. It does look a bit like an Edwardian toilet seat at the moment. I've used these dividers to scribe a parallel line, and then again to mark the distance between the holes. And the drilling jig is used again to help position the location of the holes. The jigsaw does a fantastic job of swiftly cutting the metal, and then tidy it up with a file. I've repurposed the fixture assembly to make sure everything is held in exactly the right place for assembling the shelves. So it's final checks before painting. I found these brackets in the scrap bin. I drilled a hole in the frame, I filed a slot in the bracket, and I've used bolts to fit them together. I can make fine adjustment to be sure that it fits perfectly. And if I don't want to put it on the ladder in the future, I could easily swap it for a different type of bracket. Ready for paint, NATO green or cherry red. A quick squirt of solvent to clean the grease off before paint. Firstly, the aluminium etch primer. And then, top coat. Then a couple of days of drying to help harden the paint. Bang in some end caps. Bolt the shelves in place. And here's why I rounded the corners. Tighten it all up. Make up some Velcro straps. Then rivet them in place. Be proud of where it was made. It works perfectly. It does everything I wanted it to when I set off on this project. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've picked up some ideas to build into your own projects. Like and subscribe. Let's build a community together. And take a look at some of the other clips that I've put together.